Am I cheating because I say morning and it's not morning? Wait, wait. All right, I got five minutes left. Cinque. <laughs> oh no, I do not say those things to people who do not understand Italian. Why would I say so? It's more like an insider joke. Cinque. Why would I say those things to people who do not understand? Yes, good morning. Hola, ciao, hello. Yeah, amazing length and strength I go through, despite how I feel and tend to catch the field. While I am kind of, yeah, let's say, roped in, so to speak. <clears throat> to look what's up. <clears throat> and intending to find something, what is up? Now I'm addressing something new. Yeah, how else could I be where you are? Are you where I am? How else? If I wouldn't be determined, stay there, be there, and don't move. Yeah, if I speak like this, it's because I'm exhausted. Oh, it's a hardship, I'm exhausted. So I am inten- I'm asked, you know, incited, herausgefordert, not invited, and kind of pushed to talk about los parientes, le parientes. Pariente, that's the last name. And these are two brothers, and they were born in Africa from a French mother and a Italian father. They grew up bilingual. I don't think they spoke any other language from Africa. Yeah, I was told, he told me. And they were very unified as brothers because they were living now in the American continent, all the way from the other side. So foreigners, they stick together, probably also the education. Their mother lived in Paris. And some kind of fancy thing. And they were all about fancy. And I do not know anything about the father. I can only so conclude and deduct that he was probably a soldier in the war. So for them it was to make something out of life. Be, be someone or become someone and have enough money. And they were approximately the same age. Yet one was highly intellectual, also sensitive, architects and Yeah, I wouldn't say he's a philosopher, but he was definitely interested in it and questioned things and disposed and exposed concepts, put them out for discussion. He knew lots of weird, strange words no one would talk about or say or know about. He would put them out (coughs) playfully. Like Dittiri Bambu, for example. Well, I was very small. He made it in a nipple napkin. He wrote down Dittiri Bambo 
is and then he made like multiple choices maybe four so i had to guess i mean i didn't have to i wanted to that was nice and someone actually stimulating my brain for change well i learned about the word at the time you look it up it's really cool some kind of crazy dance full of passion and enjoyment of life a hedonist yes like it a lot oh, he was into those things i mean not in real life he was just talking about it he also was other things in philosophy and he questioned his faith because he said that the education the combined education he received catholic and jewish didn't really help him to become a man so he was <clears throat> looking into the non-religious version there is a name for it where you declare yeah he did not say atheist that was my thing i would say that in mexico he said agnostic like uh, frequently a few times he was intending to find some insertion because the religion didn't make much sense to him oh i would run around in mexico and i would play with the people because people would play with me or with each other and when something like yeah if a child whistler would come <laughs> something bad we would say crucifixo and would imitate a cross with the arms right in mexico oh my god don't come close like you hold a crucifix in front of the evil right but then i would say soy atea i'm an atheist gracias a dios thanks to god y a la virgen <laughs> well, a virgen which one did i say i don't know and uh, to the virgin yeah thanks to god the virgin i'm an atheist that was very funny in mexico but i said it often I don't know, I was just, um, you know, cacharri out with people and we worked together. I was always, Mexico is a country where people talk to each other. That's cool. I like it. And make fun jokes and this and that. It's just very lighthearted everything in a way. Yeah, maybe I was not really part of their gossip. <laughs> I'm not exposed at that time. So in, in very many ways, I was like the opposite of Los Parientes. One was intellectual, an architect with whom I hang out, and the other one was his brother, who seemed like vain. He wanted to become like a diva or so. I have seen books in his living room in Cuernavaca. I suppose it was his, and not his wife's. On the other hand, who knows? <laughs> Maybe there were like some Dego items, because he didn't seem to have read much. Now here I am, and they're rich and I'm poor. And he tells me again and again how elegant I am. And I wondered about it. Not that I'm wondering that I'm elegant. No, I always was wearing dresses or skirts. And invariably they would go over the knee. Yeah, often very long dresses. Yeah, almost like a grandmother. If truth must be told. There was zero sexy going on in my life in public relation, ever. Because I'm a serious person. I wondered, why is he saying it? Because I didn't really say anything. We never talked Foucault. We never argued with Wittgenstein. I never contested his agnosticism. I never did anything. I didn't even talk about my car car la carrera, the career of international relationship. I didn't talk about it. He loved the idea that I was singing. Oh yes, he attended one of these concerts, by the way. The first ones in the cathedral. He attended the Messiahs of Henry and saw me there as a soloist. Yeah, because he happened to pass by. He would come visiting, I don't know, every three weeks or so to the country. He lived in Miami, Miami. And then he would <clears throat> do his business in Mexico City. And then he would go the weekend with his brother, who also lived in Mexico City, but had a nice little house. Actually, a little house, yes, in Cuernavaca, in a nice neighborhood. His house was more vertical than horizontal. That's funny. Yeah, because Cuernavaca is weird. I mean, really, it took me like months to get to know the city. And let, let, I mean, I was, I went to Sofia. No, the city. Well, I also went to Bucharest in Romania, but I went to Sofia in Bulgaria. Yeah, when I was eight. And the bus dropped us, my mother and I. And then we had to go, after, after an hour we had to, tourist here to check out the city and she was lost after all she didn't know what to do 
I told you, it's right here. <laughs> I had like this sense of orientation and I was reading maps too. But in Cornawaka, it was so hard. It's like you have a hand and you stretch it out, but longer. So if you take one of those fingers as a road, there's no way you can access anything else. Unless, of course, you go right back where your palm of the hand is and you go up another street. And then lots of little things, much more to it. Yeah, I was actually initiating the cultural foundation Eri from then. And yeah, within that parameter, I met the Parientes eventually. In some public event, I met them. And I would actually divide, uh, um, distribute the invitations for the events in Cuernavaca personally. There were not so many people in the beginning, so it was possible. For which, of course, I learned I got to know the city. I learned everything about it. And that makes me feel strong. And that makes me feel, yeah, not really powerful. But yeah, I got to know my environment. That was by far the most difficult city to get to know. I reckon no one knows it that, <laughs> that well, again. Oh, do you know how many stories I have in my head right now? Yeah, ramifications, branching out. I'm just listening what has to be said. I do not know why I'm pausing so much. Maybe because I'm constantly thinking. I don't have to pause, I don't have to interrupt my phrase at all. Maybe this is something else, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just to make you feel comfortable if you needed to talk. Yeah, what could be interesting possibly? Why did he call me elegant? I didn't never ask. He also said you're uncompromisable. And that's a very strong character trait, which is very admirable. Formidable. To him, it was almost unattainable, unreachable. Yeah, he was completely blown away and fascinated. And with the same token, he put me a big stick in front, not to get closer, <laughs> as he called me in constantly. Weird, weird, weird. Yeah, constantly he would call me in when he would be on a visit, insisting that I would go over to have lunch with his brother. Oh, the house was vertical. That's interesting because it's like on, on una barranca that was in front. Yeah, it's like una envergadura. Do you see how this is? <laughs> I wasn't prepared. It's like a tiny bit of a mountain, a hillside. Then there is this oh, house, but the rooms were tiny. And then there were stairs and then there was, you know, large stair, almost like two flights down. And then there was maybe another tiny room and then a medium sized garden. So it wasn't really a big deal, but the setting was kind of luxurious. I said in another description that he would imitate Philip Stark decoration. That is a designer of fashionable, weird art, weird artifacts, of interesting artifacts. For example, he brought me once one of those and that was a lemon press, a manual lemon press made of plastic, but it was like milky plastic you could see through. And that was like the size of a uh, thirty-five ounce tumbler, so larger than a cup. And on top, it would have this in green or turquoise. It would have this thing where you press the lemon, but it was in, shaped as a cactus. I was okay. I mean, it was cool. It was just something different. And Philip Stark has like, I don't know how much, but one hotel is in Miami, Miami. I prefer to say Miami. I know the Cubans say Miami. And there is this hotel and it's distinguished of its architecture because in the entrance there is like a curtain and the curtain is like two or three stories tall and it's flowing in the wind and it's like cool. <laughs> I don't know. There was other things going on. It's so simple. So the owner of the house, he imitated that curtain and put it in his house and looked elegant, but not fancy. Juvenile and kind of freshing with style. And it was very simple. Yeah, I talked about the ligand, the siege, which are these things where you can lay down and you are at the beach or at the pool. 
and he would just have mattresses on it and he would wrap him oh well, of course not him of course oh my god yes no <laughs> no silk i do not touch <laughs> i said mate i would wrap around white towels just that it was so simple and it was so wonderful i enjoyed it yet he lived in the street in cornavaca or mexico has plenty of those the streets actually remind you that here is a country me fox me fox <laughs> Mi gente, my people. Where is plenty of art going on? We have writers, we have movie makers. Yeah, more than one. Yeah, Don Miguel was one, Don Miguel Zacarias, but there were a few more, two, I think two more. Yeah, don't take it for granted. I didn't study it. I know it was just one, but the names were out there somehow. Yeah, what a gift, right? We had him life. <laughs> just about to be 100. Ooh. And we have painters, we have muralists like Diego Rivera, you know about Diego Rivera, but you do not know about Siqueiros, or you, you do not know about Orozco. But one of the parientes, the intellectual, he would know everything, I say so. I'm pretty sure he would not just rest and not look. So <clears throat> writers brought amazing, cool literature. Of course, you know about Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude. Yeah, you go ahead and read it. It's going to help you with your vocabulary. It doesn't matter which language. It doesn't matter the language which is comfortable to you. Any language. Or well, sometimes I read them in two languages. The original and another one, or depending where I'm at. Yeah, because it gives out different messages sometimes, the translation. But you know about Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but you do not know about other authors. So he was living in the street called Rufino Tamayo. And did he ever ask the dummy? <laughs> Not the architect, the dummy, where he lived. I don't think he gave a shit about it. But it's just interesting because when I met him, I met him first and then his brother later. That was in some of those cocktails from Amigos de la Musica. Plenty of people. And he was running around como un pavo real. Like a blown up diva. I was wondering if he was gay because he made such an allure about himself. Like, I don't know, Trutan in German, but is it a turkey? No, it's a peacock, that's it. Like a peacock. And that made no sense. Because we were already intellectualized, because of thanks to me and other people in that place. So him coming out in this vein and vanity, that was almost disturbing, per se, the least. So here's the man who is, I don't know, probably reaching the better half of his life. Yeah, half a century. Acting out like a little five-year-old. And I felt so sorry for him that it actually became cute. And I thought, my gosh, he needs me. <laughs> he needs the people, he needs me, because of course no one would respond to that because no one would understand what he needed. But I do. I mean, I do know what he needs. And of course I would not give him what he expected because that's what people do. Our snickers, right? <laughs> you just sort of have to put on your crown and then people would start bowing <laughs> somehow. But I do not do that. I gave him real appreciation. So he immediately talked to me and invited me over to his house. On the following day, yes, I think that's what it was. The following day he would have a little, in the middle of the day, you know, with his family, his wife, his child, and someone else came. Yeah, his brother would come and on and so forth. And of course, as usually, I establish myself as, yeah, now I have to say this, right? Hello? Okay, I do it. As the royal I am. But of course, neither look down on him, because I am respectful, despite of what display he just pulled out there. And neither look up on him, because he thought so, that now everybody had to bow. Why would I? He had nothing to offer. I have never looked up to anybody. Not that I don't want to, I just never found anybody. Sometimes I appreciate stuff they do. Yeah, playing the bass, for example. Or something. But somehow I think I disarmed him right there. Because I am so very expressive, which I had no clue. I always thought I was only silent and minding my business, and I had no idea what my expression, my facial expression, or my ac reaction or action, or the lack thereof, would give to people. 
So every single time happens to me everywhere in the world and people would highly respect me just because I'm not a licker and I'm not a kicker. Just because people have the right to be and to exist.